And of course, it's a Healthy Thursday, so we continue comprehensively on detailed health content. Okay? And if you go to the website of the World Health Organization, they have indicated for your nutritional needs, hydration, as well as making sure you eat right, to become very important in these COVID times. And that's why we decided uh, to bring on board a dietitian, non AJ, to help us also uh, have all these related conversations because you do also know that apart from what we need to do we also have our christian uh, our muslim brothers and sisters who are within the ramadan period and so we need to make sure they hydrate themselves and within the period when they have to eat they eat right now uh, nana aj is joining us good morning to you nana good morning now now w w why is it important for uh, hyd hydration to be an important part of of what we need to do for our nutritional levels. Okay, thank you. Um, hydration is very important because um, I'm sure viewers may have heard about water forming a very large percentage, as much as 70 to 80 percent of the body. And there are specific functions that the fluid content of the body plays. So one important thing is that it cushions the joints in the body. So the various joints in the body have to be lubricated so that the bones don't rub against each other. So you need water in the body to help the body achieve that function. And the body also uses water in digestion. So you need enough fluid to help your body digest well, to produce the juices and things that are needed to digest the food that you eat. The body also regulates temperature with water. So if you're feeling cold or if you're feeling warm, the, the body uses water to cool down the body as it's required. Also, water helps us to keep our weight in control, especially if you are substituting your water intake um, for other sugar-sweetened beverages and otherwise unhealthy beverages that we would take. And then one very important thing is that water removes toxins from the body. And these toxins include bacteria and all the viruses and other things. So for your body to be able to clear waste substances and foreign material from the body, it also makes use of water. Mm. Uh, and I was just uh, uh, going through the whole of yesterday evening, uh, the site of, of the World Health Organization, especially for the Mediterranean region. And they advised mm -hmm. on that side that um, apart from taking just ordinary water, uh, natural water, you can also augment that with a lot of um, um, watery foods. Now, uh, yeah. how does that complement that uh, in, in, in the health sense? So the, the body has a, a high requirement of water and for a lot of us, we are not able to meet that requirement. Even for the average of two liters that we need for maintenance, it's difficult for a lot of people to take that in the form of plain water. However, there are lots of other healthy things that we take in that have water content, like uh, fruits and vegetables, like watermelon, cucumbers that have enough water that can hydrate the body. So if you are adding these things to your food and you are using water in preparing other things you eat, like our soups and our porridges, for example, then the body absorbs the water from it. So mm. it's not just plain water that the body uses. Provided you are not adding a lot of salt or a lot of sugar to whatever you are taking, the body makes use of the water perfectly. Mm. Uh, th that would mean that we need to find these sources. Uh, wh which ones would be the appropriate ones in terms of the sources of the water and then also where you can get foods that have the watery content that the body also needs? Okay, so from the previous um, image that was shown, um, the glass depicts the various sources of um, fluid we can take. And the red, gold, green um, color signals show us how safe it is or how good it is to choose the various options. So as always, water is the first choice. And you have to ensure that you are taking between 1.5 to 2.5 liters daily. When it comes to water, aside the plain water that we take, you can um, prepare the infused water, what we call infused water. So you can have some fruit slices or some vegetable slices and add even some herbs like mint 
in your glass of water, infuse it overnight, and then it, it adds some flavor to the water you are taking. And then you also get some vitamins like vitamin C, which are water soluble, mm. seeping into the water. Yeah, so you get an added benefit, and then you have that extra flavor for those who do not just like plain, boring water. And when it comes to water, I know people have some reservations about taking cold water. But really, for, a, for the average healthy person, there's nothing wrong with taking a glass of cold water if you feel like taking it. Because your body can work on the temperature and bring it back to the level where it's supposed to be. So if you want a glass of cold water, mm. feel free and go for it. Mm. Now, I'm, I'm, usu then, I'm usually an iced water person. And I get all these um, advice, if not cautions, mm -hmm. from, from people around me, as well as even having these um, messages that come on WhatsApp frequently about how if you drink cold <laughs> water and, and you have eaten mm -hmm. some uh, fatty food, it, it gets to have some, some problems for your body. Yeah, how, how can yeah. we break those it misconceptions? I've, I've, seen, I've seen some of those posts about water um freezing the oil in your, your your intestines or in your stomach but the body is warm even when you breathe out and you feel it you feel some heat or some warmth coming from within the body so once the cold water travels and gets to your stomach the body regulates the temperature so it's not going to freeze the oil in the food that you have eaten like people have been saying so feel free to take your iced water if you want to mm. Now, uh, we, we have to come to terms with the use of the vitamins. There are the people who are vegans, and then there are others mm -hmm. also who want to go organic. And so they don't, li they don't like the orthodox medicinal way of, mm -hmm. of taking medications uh, that the pharmaceutical industry produces. Um, any alternative they can have? Yes, so fruits and vegetables are the ultimate source of vitamins. Like you're saying, most of the pills and supplements we will take will be um, manufactured forms of the vitamins. So you want to go in for your fruits and vegetables as often as possible. If you are taking your five um, servings of vegetables a day, whether in the form of your soups or mm. your stews or your salads, you are getting enough vitamins once you are eating every meal that you are having with some form of vegetable and adding a fruit or two to your meals, you are sure that you are getting the requirement that your body needs. People have to be people who have to be worried about supplementation are probably pregnant women when it comes to their iron. Then they would need some form of supplementation because the body may not be able to absorb the iron that they need, everything mm. from their diet. So they have to look at supplementation. And then people with certain conditions where they have problems with absorption of their nutrients, for example, people who have undergone certain kinds of surgeries may need supplementation as a requirement. But for the general healthy person, if you are eating enough vegetables and adding some fruits, you are sure that you are meeting your vitamin and mineral requirements. And I know practically, look, these days we have a lot of uh, blending machines all, all around, things that tend to do a lot of mixtures for us that uh, you, the dietitians, call smoothies. A lot of people have come to love them. But by way of nutritional value to complement what we eat within these times, uh, let's start with um, the fruity ones. Um, how do we mix mm -hmm. them? Uh, how do we also blend them, whether with color, with additives, etc.? So um, as much as possible, the, the advice is to eat a rainbow, a rainbow in terms of the colors of the fruits that you are eating. Yes, so you can have different fruits that you can combine to give you different colors like is shown in the picture. When you come to our setting, we don't have a lot of these exotic um, fruits that are being shown, but we have equally colorful ones like our mango, our watermelon, um, and other local ones, pineapple, pawpaw, that we can use. And a lot of the ones we have around here, the tropical fruits are packed with a lot of nutrition. So when it comes to preparing your smoothies, if you are using it as a meal replacement, which some people tend to do these days, then you want to make sure that you have a fruit in there, you have some vegetables, preferably the green vegetables. So in Ghana, we have spinach, what people call boko boko. You can add that to your fruit. 
and then you can add a source of healthy fat. So you can use either peanut butter, what we call granite paste, or um, coconut fruit, so that you have some source of fat in the smoothie as well. And then if it's replacing your meal, then you can add something like oats so that it becomes a complete meal for you. But you cannot take this smoothie I've just described after you have had your meal because it's packed. It has a lot of energy. It has a lot of nutrients in there. So you're going to gain weight because you are adding on to what you've eaten already. If your smoothie is just going to be a snack or a refreshing drink for you, mm -hmm. you can just do a vegetable smoothie. So mm -hmm. something like a carrot juice, it's, it's fine. Or you can do your cucumber with your apple mixture. Those ones are lighter on the calories, so you can take those. Okay. Or you just do one fruit. So you just blend watermelon. The issue with blending of fruits is about quantity. So a lot of the time, we like to take fruits in large quantities, ignoring the fact that the fruits also contain calories and natural sugars, which would add up to our total intake for the day. So if you're taking your fruits as snacks, you want to restrict the portions as much as possible and not overdo the, the quantities. Mm, mm. Uh, okay, so we're op opening the phone line. So we're putting the phone lines on your screen and then you can also call us uh, subsequently. If, uh, if, for example, I particularly love using the, the local things that we have. So if you live in mm -hmm. any of these communities we have and you feel that you, you have identified or there are certain staples or fruits or, or other vegetables that are also related to your community you would want to blend. Uh, our dietitian Nana is available for you to ask the critical question. So the numbers will be on your screens too. Now, um, I, I know that we use Ademedawa, Dawa, Prekese and some of those things. And, and they've become a part of uh, being used uh, even for other sort of dietary supplements. Uh, how do we do that? So it's, it's all about quantity and doing things in moderation. A lot of these um, natural foods have medicinal properties and they are very potent. So if you are combining, for example, you are blending dandelion with uh, a lot of other things. I know people do some wild combinations. So they do dandelion with maybe lemongrass, have mint in there. That's a lot of nutrients. Ideally, it would be good, but in a large quantity, it burdens the body because your kidney has to do a lot of work to clear the waste that comes into the body. When you blend, you reduce the size. So if you are drinking, you take in more than you would have taken if you were eating as a salad or using in your stew, for example. Mm. So the advice I would give is that we shouldn't do these things daily. It can be something that you do maybe as a cleanse, once in a while, but not as a daily thing, blending concoctions and taking every day. Mm. Mm. Quite interesting. Oh, well, so the phone lines are still opened, and then you can call us, let us get to know. There, there, there are people who have peculiar uh, nutritional dietary needs, just because mm -hmm. uh, maybe they have chronic ailments or have some difficulties elsewhere. Uh, we have sickle cell patients, we have people who, are, who have kidney-related issues. Um, what do they do in these times? Well, please wait. Uh, let me take a call from East Legon. Christian is there. Christian, good morning uh, to you. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, Christian. I'm good. Good, 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 good. to hear from you. you. You want to contribute to our discussion or pe perhaps ask some questions. You can speak. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's about a question. Okay, please. Uh, I, I actually want to find out from our lady dietitian. Uh, there's this issue of Hello? Please go ahead, Christian. Okay, she can hear okay, you okay. clearly. Yeah. Uh, concerning caffeine in our diet, mm -hmm. most of the times you hear people telling us caffeine is not good, caffeine is not good. I want to know how mm -hmm. truthful is that because some of our herbs and vegetables that we take, some of them contain um, this caffeine, but people entirely con uh, condemn the, the use of uh, caffeine. I want to know the truth in it. Thank you. Because I know we have synthetic caffeine, which is made up from the, mm. the laboratory and all that. But yes, so we have caffeine in some of our natural things like green tea, uh, black tea, and all that. We have caffeine in them. So how, uh, how do we 
Yeah. Uh, you understand now? Do we yeah, Christian, this is a true... That? Christian, this is a true East Legon question. Uh, please, Nana, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 hold on to this. We'll take a next one from New Edubiasi, and it's where uh, Mina Hunter is calling from. Mina? Yes, senior. Yeah, boss. Mr. Roo, my, my sincere greetings to you in uh, the studio. Atikam, yes. atikam. Yes. So, please, so um, please, please go uh, ahead. Yes. We thank you for this educative program that you are organizing. Thank you okay, for uh, encouraging us. You know, uh, we need to also have an update on uh, food that do not blend. You know, all this while, we just know that Dawa Dawa is good. We just know that uh, Queen Sisa is good. We just know that uh, some uh, lemons are good. But then, blending them, some of the food and vegetables are not blendable. You blend them and you realize that it will become a toxin or it will become a poison to the human system. So we want Nana to help us to kind of identify. Okay, Mina Hunter, so you, you are saying yeah. that there are some, some at least some fruits or some, uh, you know. I, for instance, mm -hmm. I can blend almost nine fruits. I have my beetroot, I have my cucumber, I have my uh, pineapple, banana. I blend them all together with, uh, with uh, some little quantities. Yeah, mm. I blend them all together. But then we want to know right. if they wouldn't have an adverse effect on the human system. Okay. Mina Hunter, have you lived in India before? The way you keep blending things. Have I lived in India? <laughs> yeah. You... Not really. I have uh, a food and nutrition book, uh, a healthy juices book. Fantastic. And that I kind of follow the uh, guidelines. And I use it in kind of solving so many. Me, I'm for one person who don't kind of... Uh, like taking orthodox drugs and uh, you are an organic person yeah. thank I, you very much yeah. F thank you very so much we want to know all right who's... so so uh, no no please answer christian uh says caffeine now what do we do with it if they are already inherent in the product and then in a hunter is saying mm -hmm. blending uh, he has a a nine fruiter recipe going by his book <laughs> okay so with the issue of caffeine like he said, there's naturally occurring caffeine in foods like coffee and tea. Um, previously, it was thought that because caffeine is a diuretic, a diuretic is something that makes the body produce a lot of urine. So when you take something like coffee, it has that effect of making you pass urine. Previously, it was thought that the caffeine, the diuretic effect was very high. But current studies show that the effect is not as profound as we thought it was previously. So the advice is that with every cup of coffee you take, you take a glass of clean or pure water so that the urine that you pass will be replaced by that water that you are taking. So if you're going by that, you can take your teas and your coffee without any issues or any problems. The issues come when it's found, it's the artificial kind that is added to some drinks, especially the energy drinks. A lot of them have these stimulants and caffeine is one of them. If you take them regularly, then you may be putting more than your body can deal with into the body. And then it, it gives you the effects of irritability and keeps you awake and you cannot concentrate and all those negative side effects. Mm. Second one, Mina Hunter with his diet book, fruit yes. juice book. So the key here is keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. As much as possible, if you are doing just one fruit and a vegetable, you should be okay. There's no need to combine as many as nine fruits because you may be overdoing your sugars, first of all. You may be overdoing some of the vitamins, some of the minerals. And I don't know exactly what he's combining, so I may not be able to talk about the interactions that are there. There are nutrient interactions that will occur within the body if you eat certain things together. But if you are keeping your smoothies simple and doing just the fruits or even eating the fruits as they come naturally, then you are sure that you wouldn't have these problems. Mm. Okay, let's go to uh, David. David, you're calling from where? Where's the place you're calling from? David? Oh, David is gone. Well, Na uh, Lamyoko. Na, are you on? are you online? La Lamyoko. Na Lamyoko. Na, are you are you online? Na, well, now it's also 
calling from Jamestown. Uh, okay, so we, so we do have from who? The Volta Regional Capital Charity. Charity. Hello. Yeah, hi. You want to put, put some questions to Nana? I yes, please. Mm, mm. Please go ahead. Oh, okay. Please, I want to ask about Moringa. How do you uh, take in Moringa? Mm. Okay. Nana, okay. you want to answer her? Okay. Yeah, sure. Mm. So Moringa is, is very healthy. It has good effects on your blood pressure, your blood sugar. The best way is to use it in your soups. And if you're using it as a, in a stew, for example, if you blend, like I said, the, the risk of overdosing is high because if you blend a cup of Moringa leaves, you get a very small amount of the, the juice or the smoothie from it. So if you want to take in a whole cup of Moringa juice, that would be a lot and it may be more than your body can deal with. And the issue with the kidneys is that you don't know the day where your kidneys will just go into an injury and just decide to shut down. So you want to stay safe. You want to help the kidney as much as possible by not overburdening it. So use it in your soups, use it in your stews, and you should be fine. Right. Mohammed. Mohammed. Yeah, Mohammed from Abekasa. Uh, Salam alaikum. Are you fasting? Salam. Uh, are you fasting? Yes, please. Uh, great, great. So, good question. Uh, uh, you're calling from Abeka. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, my question is uh, the benefits of Prekese in this uh, local attire, what we call it the green tea attire. attire. The benefits. Uh, you mean the one, the one we take in the Zongo? Because in Ashaiman, uh, I take some attire. G G Hello? Okay. Hello, I say ginger, prekese, and then in the, in the mix up with yes. the benefits. Attire, prekese, the mixtures. Yes, okay. The ginger. Okay, we'll know that down. Auntie, Auntie Alice? Yes. Yeah. You're calling from Elmina? Yes. Uh huh. You want to ask a question? No, no, yes. it's on. It's on. Sir, good morning. Morning, Auntie Sir, Alice. I want to ask Auntie Nana. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, a uh, number. You want to have a number? Uh, yes. Okay, so we will take your number and we'll I'm do... A sickle, I'm a sickle cell patient. Okay, so you want uh, to... Hey, I don't take orange, mm. some fruit. So I want to ask Auntie Nana what fruit I should pick. Okay, okay. So if I can get Auntie Nana's number. Right, right. That's All right. That. Okay, please. So Auntie, Auntie Alice, um, we'll yes. get in touch with you with Nana's number. Sule, you're calling from Konongo. Sule. Pardon? Uh -huh. This is not pardon. Please reduce the number, uh, reduce the the volume yeah. the volume on your screen or your TV. I think that will help. Uh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh huh. So reduce the volume on your TV. Ha have you reduced it? Yeah, I have reduced it. Okay. Please, your question to Nana. My question is: I do take lemon every day. Is it good for me? Okay. Is please it lemon. Please hold on. You do take lemon every day. Nana. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, Sule, be online. Nana. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sule takes lemon does he every take day. Does he take it raw? Okay. Does he mix it with water? Sule. Sule, Sule, do you take it raw or you mix it with water? I mix, I, I mix it with water. I do drink. Uh, yeah, put one in it and, and, and drink it. Okay, so you squeeze one lemon in a cup of water, a glass of water, and you take? Yeah, yeah. Each morning? Warm water, yeah. Okay, warm water. Okay, so, uh, Nana, uh, Sule does that. One warm water in a glass, uh, in a glass of water, and um, that's, that's what he does every morning. Okay. What's the advice? So, um... It's, it's fine, provided he doesn't have an ulcer or any condition that um, requires that he shouldn't take fruits like lemon, the citrus fruits, on an empty stomach. That's fine. If you're adding it to your water, the benefits you are getting is that you are hydrating yourself, first of all, and you are getting the vitamin C from the lemon in the water and all the other nutrients that are in the lemon juice, you get them as well. But people do this with the mindset that it's going to burn fat in the body, especially fat around the, the stomach. If it's replacing your meal, you will get that effect because you have cut down 
on your intake. You have cut down on your calories. But the lemon juice itself does not directly cross from your stomach and then burn the fat that is lining mm -hmm. the stomach walls. Mm -hmm. So that's one misconception we have to clear. If you are looking at burning fat around your abdomen, you need to exercise and you need to eat healthy to get that effect. Mm. And um, the related issue about you trying to get the right sort of um, uh, uh, lemon and how warm you are, you are saying that if you have other complications that you are not supposed to take, which will be those uh, ailments? Typically, people with ulcers. Ulcers. And then, yeah, stomach ulcers. And then there are people with kidney issues who, um, as and when their labs come in, they are required to stay off certain foods. Right. So they will. They, those people would know that they are not supposed to take. Um, All right. Um, There's a question yeah. pending, but let me take two more before. That's Mohammed's question, right. and uh, yeah. um, Daniel from Navrongo and Abdullahi from Walewale. Wale. Let me start with Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, Daniel. Your question. Yeah. Uh, the moringa they are talking about. Mm -hmm. When you take the seeds of moringa, when you take it. Uh, too much, you you pay. I don't know whether it is good for you to take the seeds of moringa for you to pay. What do you mean by you pay? You mean you'll be running? You run. You run. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, Ab Abdullahi from Wale Wale. Abdullahi. Okay, so um, uh, uh, Nana, let's start with um, uh, the attire mixtures. You know when you Abdullahi. Hello? Yeah, Abdullah, please ask your question. Good morning. Yes, please. Please go ahead. Reduce the volume on, on your TV Hello? sets. Reduce the volume on your TV, please. Hello? C can you hear me? Abdullah? Hello? Yes, please. Hello? Good morning. Go ahead. Yes, please. I want to find out if your work doesn't permit you to eat a little bit. Normally, you eat a little and so what can you possibly do to reach the fat that you always accumulate in your body? Okay. And secondly, if you can think about the dietitian so that you can possibly give you a timetable for, like, possible menu okay. for a house so that you can contain the okay. fat you accumulate. All right. So, Abdullah, no, no, Abdullah wants to know, uh, he works. Um, longer hours and so gets to mm -hmm. only eat late either in the evening or late in the day he is asking uh, what does he need to do to make sure he burns the fat uh, what type of food should he be eating so that he doesn't accumulate fat uh, mm -hmm. uh, exactly uh -huh. and then he wants your number so that you give him a menu plan but we'll do, we'll do that one but first the attire the mixtures etc that we drink in the communities I like okay, it a lot, so, so I need to get I'm educated. Assuming, I'm assuming the attire is a, is a herb, right? Is a tea. Yeah, they, we mix it with also a little bit of caffeine and stimulants, mm -hmm. and sometimes precursor and things are mixed together for a lot of things. Okay. Mm. So um, if it's a tea, teas have what we call flavonoids, which are good um, compounds that help the immune system to function well. So it would be a good thing to have. I'm not sure how much caffeine or stimulants that are in there, but if it's more than the body needs, then it would be something to watch out for. But the other things that are added, like ginger, percocet, have a lot of different benefits. Ginger especially is good for the immune system, so it would be a good thing to add to your tea. Percocet is good for your blood pressure, so it would also be a good thing to add. And the thing with the tea is that I'm sure it will, it will be brewed and the contents will be sieved out. So it's just the fluid that will be taken. So that's also fine. It wouldn't be too much on the system. Mm. And now um, the gentleman eats late. He wants some advice. Yeah, so like you mentioned, it's important for people who work late hours to eat healthy so they are not even accumulating the fat in the first place. There are certain foods that... And cause the body to build up a lot of fat. These are foods that contain a lot of energy or a lot of calories. So if you are eating fried foods, if you are taking drinks with your meals, like the soft drinks or what people call minerals with your drink with your meals, you are going to have extra calories with these meals. And if you are eating late at night, 
you have to reduce the quantity. So you don't eat a very heavy meal in the same quantity you would eat for lunch if you are eating it later at night. It will be better if you... Mm. Well, uh, that's where we wrap up. And uh, Nana AJ is a dietitian for the day. A healthy Thursday. We've been tackling all related issues, health. And uh, we started with a great conversation uh, with Dr. Isabella Sego Moses, who is in charge of Family Health uh, Directorate at the Ghana Health Service and helping us with all those discussions as well. We have to take a break. When we come, I will bring you the latest uh, showbiz interactions with Kadi, but you also know that we'll take you live to that press conference at the Ministry uh, for Information. <laughs>